Um, hello guys, um, welcome to the Africa once again. Um, so my name is Philippine. I have not been mentioning my uh, my real name. So my name is Philippine and um, thank you guys for tuning in. So um, I decided for us to have this live session because I think it's very important for us to discuss about pressing issues that are happening between us and um, other Africans. But then in this case, we'll be talking about the situation between um, Zimbabwe and South Africa. So um, thank you everyone for tuning in. Um, yes, I can see you, um, Malume Laki Manyama, as well as um, Firebrand78, and everyone else who is actually tuning in. So um, as I've already mentioned, um, we'll be talking about situation like, for example, um, the job situation, the crime, xenophobia, and all those difficult conversations that are very hard to have. So I think it's very important for us to um, voice out our views so we can come up with a solution just um, to be able to listen to each other and understand each other's standpoint. So, okay. Um, yeah, so we can um, go into the situation. So before we get into the topic, um, one thing that I think is um, very important for us to notice is that, especially um, like countries that are around South Africa, we have a very um, similar culture, like the Sadiq countries, we have a very similar culture. And at some point, we are the same people at some point. So it's very important for us to um, to be able to understand like a bit of um, our differences here and there, um, like listen to each other, work it out so that we can come up with a long lasting solution that will be able to help us to get further. For example, we can be able to like um, mobilize, who knows, um, we can be able to mobilize do something so um, it could impact our government, probably, I don't know. but. Everything starts from a small thing, then um, if everyone is in consensus, then definitely um, a great impact can be made. So, um, yeah, if anyone has um, anything to say about the situation, like a startup point or anything, um, they can say about what they think um, the real situation or the real issue is um, between South Africa and Zimbabwe in this case, because that's the topic for today. And let's see what we can come up with. And um, another thing is that please let us have um, a respectful conversation, no insulting each other. I know at this point we are all emotional, but um, that's why we're having this live session so we can be able to listen to each other and educate each other from there. I'm here to, to learn and I am willing to learn from everyone else. And I hope everyone else is here to learn as well, share the, their point of view so we can come up with a solution that can be productive for all of us. So yes, um, anyone who's willing to start, um, you can go. Or you can like also feel free to like um, send messages on the comment section, um, comment whatever that you're thinking. So yeah, we can um, go from there. So, And as I've already mentioned, like one of the other um, conversations that I wish we could have today is especially um, the present situation that's happening currently or that has happened um, most recently, which is the issue of um, Elvis Nyati, as well as um, the seven South African citizens who have said to be have been killed by foreign nationals. I'd want us to share our um different point of views there, because um, one thing that I have noted is that the media has been like um, 
putting up a biased point of view. So they've only been reporting on one side of the story and not representing the other. So I think this is like um, a platform for us to be able to represent each other and be able to hear each other's standpoint about actually what is the situation around um, Elvis Knight Nyati, I mean, and um, if you think that was a xenophobic act or that was basically a vigilante group acting. The reason why I say this, um, I'm just going to elaborate on that. So the reason why I'm asking if this was a xenophobic act or if this was actually um, a vigilante group, basically, um, not necessarily vigilante group, I meant, um, what is it called again? Um... What is it called? Um, jungle justice, basically, that's what I mean. If this was actually um, a xenophobic act or jungle justice. So, um, yeah, so I wanted, uh, I want us to actually um, talk about that and discuss about um, the circumstances um, surrounding it. So, for example, when, um, um, so for example, when um, jungle justice happens to a South African, we just call it like, okay, um, basically, okay, when a South African is killed by a group of people or a community, we call that um, jungle justice. And then when a foreign national instead is killed by a group of people, we call that xenophobia why is it that so why is the standard difference now when it's between a south african and a foreign national why is it that elvis nyachi's situation was not labeled as jungle justice but instead it was termed um xenophobia because basically according to me and what i think but like I've, oh, i'm already saying i am willing to learn is that um, Elvis Nyati's situation was more of jungle justice because the community itself is saying that he was part of the group that killed um, the seven South Africans, if I'm not mistaken. So if that's the case, then the community um, doing what they did to him was jungle justice instead of xenophobia. That's what I think. But like I'm already saying, I'm willing to listen to everyone's standpoint, like for example, from South Africans, as well as um, from Zimbabweans. Let us like pour our hearts out so we can be able to heal because um, another thing that's very important when it comes to the healing process is to be able to accept the truth, accept what's there, then we can work from what we have and um, go there, um, go from there. So, yeah, um, okay, so let's see. Oh, um, Reina Mutani says, hi, guys. So, hi, Reina. And, um, okay, Senzeni Mang, um, what we want is all foreigners to leave South Africa, and uh, starting off with Nigerians and Zimbabweans, because that's the only way of avoiding real violence in our country. And then um, Firebrand78 says, um, how is it being confirmed that foreign nationals were involved in the seven people that were killed in Deep Sloot? Um, not comparing, but just curious. Um, so basically from what I understood from what has been, um, been said around is, um, I'm actually going um, answering what um, Firebrand is saying. So what I understand from what has been said, um, since, um, um, what's his name, Elvis Nyati is from Deep Sloot, the community there, obviously the, com the community knows what's happening in the community. That's what I get from it. And the community is saying, who was probably part of the group, that was involved in it. So, for example, someone from a different community can't come to probably Sentin and be like, okay, a person from Sentin was involved in this crime or not. It's the community there that will probably know the person more than anyone else. Um, that's actually what um, I got from it. But I would appreciate if um, other people have a different opinion from that. But basically, that's what I got from it. That's why I'm actually opening up this platform, this platform, so we can actually hear other people's point of view, and be able to um, 
see um, where it goes from there. Okay. Um, so right now I'm just trying to see. Um, Okay, so I have like a curious question for those who are already here. I just want to find out from you guys. Um, do you guys think that South Africa is genuinely xenophobic? What do you guys think about it? And um, another question that I also um, have, like I, that I also have, is um, if you think that South Africans are lazy. And another question that I also have is um, if we also think that um, Zimbabweans are criminals. Basically, these are just generalizations that are already there, and it's things that I wish we can. Um, discuss about and have a broadened view about, do we genuinely think all these things are the case? And if so, why is it so? For example, I am a South African and I would probably be biased about it and think that, well, no, South Africans are not lazy or South Africans are not xenophobic. But then if I get to think about deeply and reflect on certain things. I'll probably agree with other things and I'll disagree with others, of which already, um, for example, with the standpoint of um, South Africans being xenophobic, I disagree with South Africans being xenophobic. I don't think South Africans are xenophobic at all. I just feel like um, certain things that happen are just criminal elements of which we already like spoke about certain things that well um criminality has no nationality however it's also important for us to also note that even though criminality has no nationality we still have people from certain countries committing crimes in south africa and this is very prevalent because south africa's borders are very porous like as we've already mentioned and anyone can, from anywhere, not necessarily Africa only, can do whatever that they wish because they cannot be traced. And this is a valid point. And it's something that cannot be ignored because it's a valid point. Yes, I believe it's true that we do have people from outside doing crimes as much as we have South Africans um, doing crimes. So, um, okay, Reina Mutsueni. Okay, so she says, mm, we are really sorry for what happened to Elvis, but I hate it when Zimbabweans try to pin it on Lux. And no, it was not xenophobic. So that's what um, Reina thinks, that it was not xenophobic. And I've already said it from my own standpoint of view that I also don't think it was xenophobic. And I gave my own reasons that I feel like that was just like a vigilante, not vigilante. Um, it was just mob justice. It was just community throwing rage on him, rage, I mean, on him. I just feel like they were just being, um, they were just reacting to it. And it's just unfortunate that he was part of it. And like I've already mentioned, they've already mentioned that they think that he's part of those that were involved in the murder of South Africans, or he's probably involved in 
very hideous crimes. I don't know about that. And another thing that I I've, haven't mentioned already so far, um, I'd also like to admit that, okay, um, may his soul rest in peace together with the South Africans that lost their lives, may their soul rest in peace. But as we're busy nursing our emotions as well, it's also important for us to actually reflect on what is happening. Okay, so we have um, Senzeni Mang. Um, in every African country, um, they are worse than us regarding the enforcement of immigration law. Our mistake is bothering to listen to foreigners about our own law. So somehow, um, I would say I also do admit with what Senzeni said. I believe that other countries are very strict when it comes to immigration, and they do not just allow anyone to come in. When someone goes into their respective countries, they go in because they were allowed in. For example, in, in Mozambique, if you go in there, and you, dry, and you try to do your funny business thing, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> I, the worst will happen to you because you'll be thrown into jail immediately. They don't play there. They really don't play there. So you don't just run around there and try to risk it as much as you would do in South Africa where they are more lenient and they'll be talking about, no, they are vulnerable, which is true. Some refugees are vulnerable. But some are not, of which is something that we should also admit on that not every refugee is vulnerable. Some are, like, are just coming here for um, economic reasons because they, um, they want a better opportunity, obviously, but they're not genuine like refugees or asylum, like asylum seekers who are running away from war, or anything from their countries. They're just moving into the country that um, they probably don't even qualify to do certain things in that particular country. They are just taking the advantage of the refugee status or asylum seeker status in order to be able to be there in that particular country. But if you have a different view from mine, like I have already mentioned, please feel free to mention on the comment section. Um, it's open for everyone to express themselves as to what they think about this. So I am open to um, reading all the comments from everyone else so we can be able to get from this. And another thing that we can also think about based on the topics that are already here. Um, so it's also this thing about, okay, what do you hold dear to your own country? And what do you think makes your country great? So if we also reflect on what you hold dear to your country and what you think um, makes your country great, it's something that we can work on. Those are the strengths of um, that particular country and it's something that we can work on. And as I've already mentioned when the video started uh, is that um, we in the Sadek region have a similar um, culture, meaning that for us to unite, like if we're thinking about Pan-Africanism, we should also be thinking about that. For us to be able to um, look at whatever views that we have and correct whatever that we have in a way. So if we have similar views or even different views that we are willing to work on, then this Pan-Africa can work. But as for now, I don't think Pan-Africanism works. For example, if I reflect on um, what was happening, I think last week or two weeks ago on the news with the um, Kobanang against xenophobia, I think um, that's what it's called. Their view is one-sided, one-sided, and they call themselves Pan-Africanist. If you are for Africa, why is it that you only advocate for one side of it? If you really want to promote pan-Africanism, why is it that you don't um, look at both sides? For example, if, um, let me give an example with um, neighbors in a way. If, let's say your child, like your children are troublesome and they do um, 
silly things in your house, like probably break the windows, do certain things in your house, right? Obviously, you'll be upset about that. How about if a neighbor's child moves into your house and breaks your windows, and then if you reprimand them, then the neighbors are like, no, you can't reprimand my child. No, you can't do that. And then, like, how do you think the relationship will be there? And then if you ask why that is happening, and then they come with the excuse like, well, your children are doing it as well. I don't think that's a very good idea. If we want to build a one Africa that is great as we are saying, I feel like we should be able to listen to each other. And then from there, we will be able to come up with a solution that will be able to work for all of us. Because if we don't do that, then nothing will work because we'll just be pointing fingers at each other. For example, I don't um, promote violence. I don't support violence at all. But then we should be able to understand what the root cause of the problem could be. So if we know what um, the root cause of the problem is, then that way we'll be able to come up with a viable um, solution that will work for the benefit of all of us. So before I um, another thing, before I came into um, this session, I, this session I was in another um, session um, in a different group where they were also discussing about the same situation between um, South Africa and Zimbabwe. And um, this other guy from Zimbabwe, he spoke about um, the truck driver situation. Um, okay, so Firebrand, he says, okay, complex question. Um, there are elements of xenophobia, but, um, but one cannot ignore the fact that crimes by a section of um, Zimbabwe and we can't just generalize. We need to look at the way foreigners are treated, which is actually true. So um, if we ref reflect on that, honestly speaking, no one is perfect. Um, I don't think anyone is perfect. Um, with the hate of like foreigners or how foreigners are treated, basically, I, I believe this is just my opinion. They are some South Africans who don't like foreigners as much as there are other Zimbabweans who don't like foreigners in their own countries. I doubt if there's any country where everyone is welcoming, where everyone wants like foreigners basically or other people to move into their countries or strangers. We have those people who, who don't feel comfortable around strangers. And I believe South Africa is not different from that. So what you're saying, um, Firebrand, is actually very true. We have certain people who don't treat outsiders nicely. However, like you've already mentioned, we should not generalize. South Africans generally do not treat foreigners badly. You know, the reason why I say this, if you look at a lot of South African, South African companies, of which in this case I'm talking about the um, legal um, foreigners, in, in this case, legal Zimbabweans. A lot of companies in South Africa have um, Zimbabweans. Literally almost every company has a Zimbabwe. And in that case, we can't really say that all South Africans um, hate Zimbabweans because if we look at, for example, even in schools, I don't, um, literally even where I come from, I come from um, Mpumalang. Even in my school, there are Zimbabweans there. Even our class, there are Zimbabweans there. Even in Limpopo, literally almost everywhere in South Africa that you go, you will find a Zimbabwe there. For the fact that they hired the person to be there, it means that they are more welcoming as well. Even within the communities, even within friend groups, you know the way we... um southern african people are so interconnected in our cultures our language and everything it's so easy for us to integrate together to a point that even in a group of friends you will definitely find a Zim like a zimbabwean within that group so it's not all south africans you know whenever something bad happens to someone we love or someone close to us we kind of feel um a bit of like betrayed in a way let me use that word betrayed and then tend to 
generali generalize that it's probably everyone who does that. And it's not the case. And it's not the case. We can actually see that as to how integrated we are with each other. Literally, I'm sure if you are in South Africa or if you have been in South Africa, probably one of your friend groups are probably South African. And that just shows how integrated we are with each other. Um, I, I honestly can't say this about West Africans because I feel like they group themselves by themselves. But then we can they can also learn to integrate amongst us. But then with Southern African people, like Botswana people, Zimbabweans as well, like Namibians, we integrate with each other. And I feel like it's just a normal dynamic thing that we have with each other. And I don't think Zimbabweans should feel like we South Africans hate them because whatever that I feel that is happening, it's just all these um, things that I've already mentioned that whenever we reprimand what is happening, it is seen as hate. Um, so, okay. And then, um, okay, I think I saw a comment. Okay. Okay, so it sends in, uh, and then she says, or he says, um, your correct pen African names <laughs> is a nonsense because they aren't united in their own countries, but are happy um, trying to unite in countries that don't even have similar cultures to them. That's actually true as well you know um there's one thing that i really like that they have mentioned before is that um there's more than one side to a story and a single story cannot be the most true story or the only true story i can say i don't know how best to say that so what um senzen is saying is also true we have seen a lot of divide um in african countries to be honest africa is divided Africa is divided. And the first place that we can learn to be able to like unite is actually start within our borders. If we discriminate our like against our own tribes within the countries, how do we ex like expect to integrate with other people? So like what I was actually talking about is just based on like a broader view that yes. I believe that like the Southern African people, like your Botswana people, your Namibian, your Sutu, um, your Swati, as well as Zimbabwe as well, like our cultures are similar. That's why I was just like focusing around those, that the cultures are a bit more similar and it will, I think it will be much easier to integrate with those compared to um, people with complete different cultures and complete different things. Of which, like you said, charity begins like at home. So if we could start by um, integrating amongst ourselves, then most definitely that's when the pan-Africanist um, idea will then come to pass. Because I've already mentioned that like um, they have this single narrative that I don't think currently the way um, pan-Africanist, like some pan-Africanists are going at, like through this pan-Africanism thing. I don't think it will work because they are bashing other Africans instead of just um, um, bringing them together so that we can come up um, with a solution. So we can be one. Since we say we want to be one, so we can be one. By being one, um, as for me, I don't believe that being pan-Africanist and being one means we have to move into a certain country altogether. I believe you can be wherever that you are as like we should just offer help to each other in whatever way so we can come up with something. For example, um, send out um, skilled people, you know, so, so we can learn skills from each other you know, exchange skills, basically, so we can grow from there. Um, so that's what I think about it, um, Senzeni. And then, um, okay, so let me just see your correct, okay. And then Senzeni again, um, okay, Zimbabweans have treated Zambians, Mozambicans terribly for decades. So we wouldn't allow them to lecture us on anything regarding them. <laughs> um, 
So basically when it comes to that, um, there's actually another video that I've already posted where uh, Zimbabwean himself, he's um, a journalist and he says that, um, uh, this is not me saying it, that's the journalist himself. So he says that um, Zimbabweans as well should also reflect on how they treat other foreign nationals in their own country. And I think I think that's also very important. Reflection is also important. Just look within yourself and think about what you also do before judging another person, basically. And... Okay, so brand fire. Okay, um, Derko needs to contact Zimbabwe, uh, Mozambique, Malawi on the influx of their nationals. Why is South Africa not engaging their political counterparts? We need to take up this at governmental at government level. Um, I also um, support that. Yes, we need to take this at um, government level. And I believe one of the ways that we can actually take this to um, government level is by actually mobilizing as communities, um, having more conversations about this, then building more structures. Because at this point, not a single individual, unless you're connected, can go up to government by themselves and dictate um, what the government should do. And another thing that we should also keep in mind is that both South Africa and Zimbabwe are a democratic country. And we already know democracy means leading by the people. So it's now the time that people should actually stand up against these dictators, against all these funny politicians who are living in high walls. And then we tell them and dictate to them what our countries actually need because we are the ones who actually understand what's happening around us. They don't care. All they are doing is collecting our tax money and doing whatever that they wish because, well, they can. But the moment we have conversations like this and create more groups and then, you know, protest and do whatever, make sure that we create awareness so we can be able to reach out to the higher levels. For example, this is basically what um, thing, um, groups like um, your Put South Africans, I, I'm not sure about um, Zimbabwean groups that are there, but then, for example, in South Africa, we have groups like Put South Africans First. We have groups like your Dudula Movement. Basically, these are like a group of people who decided to come up with ideas and they spoke about the problems that are there, and then they decided to come together and protest about this and go out there. And I think I think we should have more groups like this or join the groups that are already there in order to reach out and get the attention that we need because basically what we need is the attention and it's now that people have to speak out even more um so okay um let's see another one okay Okay, and then, okay, firebrand as well. The cost of the fence should be a 50-50 cost between South Africa and Zim. Wow, that's a actually very good idea. I actually never thought about it. This is a actually very good point when um, you say that the, um, the border fence should actually be a 50-50% um, share between, because basically it's a border between both um, of the countries and both of the countries should actually... Um, what's this, participate or share in order to build the fence. And another thing that I think they should also share onto is like the security at the fence. We shouldn't, they should, um, the leaders there should actually meet up and come up with an agreement. And I remember um, when it comes to that, um, um, Dr. Aaron Mujoli actually spoke about this, that they actually did discuss about um, the fence and that, um, the um the soldiers i think yeah the soldiers at um in the zimbabwean side as well as the soldiers in south african side should actually monitor the fence and then they should discuss about the situation that's there however he mentioned that this only had ended at a discussion level and that whenever it was time to implement this um excuse me the zimbabwean side actually didn't 
do their part of which i can't blame it on the zimbabwean side only because if we look at the south african side as well um we've we already know that our soldiers are collecting bribes meaning that they are adding to the problem that's already there um so um okay and then apples okay guys we need to um we need space to breathe so that we can sort interval affair or internal affairs as south africans we don't hate foreigners but put yourselves in our shoes please please live peacefully so well that's what uh, apple said and with regards to what um apple said um i think it should be more of those who are not really supposed to be here as as in the illegal immigrants i feel like the message is more directed to them i don't know if i'm misquoting what he said but then yeah i think basically that could be it and then we have mosa um there's an element of evil about this whole thing lives will be lost in hatred amongst countries um, Africans are prepared to see this country destroyed, to use force to live um, in this country. Okay, you see um, about what Musa said, I also kind of agree with him that I also believe that people are actually using force to go about this. And I also think using force will lead to violence and we don't want that. It will lead to more violence of which that's not what we want we want um things to go about the right way and i feel like more pressure should be put onto our government in order for the right thing to be done we need to put more pressure onto our government so that's what i think um because if not if the civilians take um, charge that's when things go completely wrong that's when things like now real xenophobia will now break like break out and that's not what we want we don't want violence amongst our people we want our people to be able to integrate amongst each other well um okay so let's see okay let's see another one okay Okay, and then IK or AK says Dudula home is the solution. <laughs> okay, basically I support the Dudula movement, guys. Don't come and struggle me. I support Dudula. Um, yeah, I support it. I believe it's um, working amongst like the rule of law. But yeah, you can give your own opinion on that. I support Dudula you can give your reason why you think it's not supposed to be. And please give valid reasons if you don't think so. So because I think it works um, with the police and it works um, around the South African constitution. So the only thing that I'll say um, everyone was condemning is them um, asking people to produce their IDs or their documentation, of which at some point I, I think that's also a bit unfair. But then I get the rage because they feel like the government doesn't want to do the to do it and they feel like they want to um take over that um okay so mosa there's nothing genuine and honest about uniting africa only in essay it's just plain self-interest and a lot of hot aim i agree with mosa if you want to um unite it shouldn't be just one country if we talk about open borders don't say south africa open borders while your own borders are closed that's what i also believe in let's or if we say open borders then come to a consensus everyone does that at least that's something but then another thing before we consider doing that we should work on the internal affairs that are already there you know have um conversation discussions like amongst the leaders and then let them come with a proper solution they are leaders we pay them for this for the fact that we're paying tax it means that we are paying them for what is happening so they shouldn't act like big bosses or anything we are paying them they are our servants and they should act like one but eh, apparently they are not so <laughs> um okay firebrand as a zimbabwean i get hot under the collar when africans don't know their history my aunt who comes before my mom was married to a Malawian, the one that comes after her to a Zimbabwean and all in Zimbabwe. 
yeah, that's true. That's nice. Because we intermarry amongst each other. But another thing that I like saying, of, of which obviously the law states differently. Another thing that I like saying is that, like, as Africans, if we look into the African culture in a way, like, you are who your father is. I stand to be corrected. That's the African culture. You are you are who your father is. So basically, you like your parents can come from all these different places, but then where your father comes from, that's where you come from. That's just the African culture. So, um, but that's not what the law says. Of, of which the law is more complicated depending on like where you were born. Um, if your fathers were citizens there and there. So basically, yeah. And then Senzeni, okay. Um, Nigerians need to integrate with West um, Africans and Bantu nations should integrate with one another. But that should be done in a federation with exchanging skills and no permanent movement of people. I support Senzeni. Definitely, I support. I feel like that's one of the best ways to go about it. And that way, if we interchange skills, meaning that more jobs can be created because now we have more skills um, amongst each other, then we'll have more jobs, then um, the quality of life will be improved amongst the people. Um, of which that's what we want. We want a great Africa. And for us to have that, we must be able to exchange skills amongst ourselves. And then, um, okay, so IK, as we speak, Zimbabweans are mistreating poor Congolese in Zimbabwe, living in camps, torturing and assaulting, yet come and cry loud with demands and entitlement in South Africa. I'm not going to say much on that. I've, I created um, um, a video on that. I just actually read an article, didn't say much. I just read an article um, by News24, which was talking about this. However, um, other people say it's fake news. I don't know about that. I just um, read the article and I think it's valid, but I stand to be corrected. Um, so, okay. And then, so we have Ndombi Futi. Okay, Ndombi Futi. I don't see the solution on Zimbabwean's problems anytime soon. I feel like they are not willing to vote or fight for their country. They are ready to fight us and call us all sorts of names. What do I think about that? I also think that um, what Ndombi is saying is actually also true as well. The reason why I say this is that Zimbabwe recently had um, their elections. Um, like, um, I forgot what it's called, but then, yeah. And I was so upset when they had a very low voter turnout. And on top of that, during that time, um, Zimbabweans were protesting in South Africa. You know, I, I was holding my heart like, please, ZANU PF, do not win. ZANU PF, do not win. And when the results came out, I think on Sunday or then, and um, CCC or Triple C won. Oh, guys, the excitement, the excitement, guys, like my fellow Zimbabweans, I, I am really praying for you guys that um, CCC wins next year in your elections. Please, guys, go home and vote. Since, like, we know some people don't want to live, please don't come to me. We know some people don't want to leave me, but to, like next year, when it's time to vote, guys, go in your numbers, go and vote, go and show them how much power you have. We want CCC to win. We want a different party. We want to see change. And, and I think with us fellow South Africans, 2024 comes, we are voting ANC out. I'm sorry if we have fellow ANC people on this chat, but we are voting ANC out. Out and um, Zimbabwe, we are voting ZANU PF out. We want to change. We want to see the youth lead and we want to see a better Africa. And for us to do that in this democratic country or countries, basically, we need to vote. So if it means going to vote and come back, and guys, do it. Do it. I stand. I support. Do it. So basically, that's just my stand around there. Please, for us to have the solutions, we need to vote um okay so another one is okay from mosa again ac will only be forced um by events to discuss with other governments otherwise they'll do nothing with several ramaphosa and uh, guys you see rama billion yeah several ramaphosa i call him rama billion because of the 500 million alleged alleged 
Yes. So, Rama Billion, ne, and that guy is chilled. He's non talent about what's happening in South Africa. He's non talent about um, situations affecting ordinary people. I honestly think he's just following um, where money is and that money that will only benefit him. I think that's where his mind is. Rama Billion, that's for you. Rama Billion, hi guys. Nope. And then, um, okay, let's see. Okay, Reina. Um, Malima just want to turn South Africa into another Zimbabwe. Can you imagine opening borders with neighbors like Zimbabwe and Malawi and other with their, okay, <laughs> F up um, economies? So definitely right now, just opening borders like that is not a good solution. I don't think it will solve um, Southern African problems. I don't think it will solve South Africa's problems either. We should work on our internal affairs. And as I've already discussed it, is that I think the first thing, first thing to start up with, guys, let's vote for young people in power. Let's vote for CCC in Zimbabwe. And let's vote out ANC in South Africa. Basically, let's start there. Let's just take these people out. And let's see what other people are actually saying. Um, I mean, what other people actually have to offer. Um, okay, so we have, um, okay, Firebrand. People make assumptions from um, social media and take it for the truth. Zimbabwe has the largest um, contingent of um, Malawians out of Malawi. Okay. Um, Kama Biliad is of Malawian descent as many Zimbabwean footballers and politicians. Guys, I will not disagree that Africans are talented. And it's just the government that is messing the situations around us. Africans are talented and if we could vote in the right government into power then we will have the best solution we will probably see change let's give people a chance and another thing that i always say is that you know if we vote new people in nay for the first term they will want to prove us right what i mean by they want to prove us right is that they will want to do something to um show that well i am capable meaning and when they do that means that change will be coming and that's what we want but the more they've become more comfortable then that's when they become more relaxed and not do anything at all then okay we have um okay mosa once again um I don't want to scare people but i foresee terrorist activity take place later on in this country um, I'm afraid to say so. I also believe it's a possibility. The way um, immigration is not regulated in South Africa, it's a possibility and it's so scary. So it's something that we should actually look up onto and the government should not be ignorant of this. Um, Okay, and then Senzen, yes, Malawians are Zimbabwe, but have never been treated well. So please, no rubbish, just truth here, buddy. I don't know, yeah. And then, okay, and then trust Movex or Movax, yeah. He says, guys, come back home. Um, okay, South Africans are tired, come back home. So what we're saying is those who are unskilled and those who are taking certain jobs other and those who are supposedly committing crimes other ones should go back home that's basically what south africans are saying i don't think it's just necessarily each and everyone saying that because for example i for example have never went um to a zimbabwean and black like, here when i go back home for just no reason because if you have obviously just people around you whom you can see are doing genuine things you can't tell them to leave because you see they're making a positive contribution. Of which that's what we want in every other country. It will be nice if if we could have more um, people with skills like interchanging um, between the countries. Like, for example, um, skilled South Africans in Zimbabwe and skilled Zimbabweans in South Africa. 
this will be a very positive contribution within the countries and it will take the countries into a greater height of which that's what we want. Um, so, okay, Reina says, I also support Dudula. So, yeah. And then we have trust again. Okay, Trevor Noah comes from Scotland. Is that what you are saying? <laughs> so, yes, that's what I, I could say because his father is not South African and he never said his father is um, South African. So, yes. So, like I said, with the law, the law would say like, oh, yeah. Um, I mean, legally, they would say, okay, Trevor is South African. But then, like I say, in the African culture, like, you know, African cultures, we always say you are your who your father is. Go to your father. That's your family. That's who you are. I'm sure you you understand what I'm saying. I'm not saying that like I'm disregarding all the um, legal things. I'm just saying in terms of like African cultures, we as Africans, we say that you are who your father is. That's all that I'm saying. I'm not disputing anything. That's why I said that um, you could still be South African um, based on the law, but then we as African will always say, okay, no, uh, this person is this because their father is from here. That's what we always say. Um, okay. And then Senzen, it makes me so sick that our government allows foreigners to fly um, to South Africa and use our hospitals and schools, um, forgetting that we, the South Africans, um, taxpayers pay for it. So you see, um, with this um, situation, um, I also admit that um, we, you see, the undocumented um, um, immigrants are the ones that we would say they put a strain to um, the South African um, economy or health system. The reason why I say this is because um, they themselves don't pay tax, so meaning that they can't contribute to it. But then every other foreigner who's working here, obviously they also pay tax because they're already working here before they get um, paid, tax gets deducted, so meaning that they are contributing. So we have those who don't contribute, of which they are the undocumented, of which I want to lie. You see, um, it's true, it's the truth. Um, we may have people denying this um, for emotional reasons that the hospitals near borders are the ones that are most at strain. Because, for example, um, I saw um, I think an article, if not a video, I can't remember where they showed a certain hospital in Zimbabwe. It's not all hospitals, obviously. They showed a certain hospital in Zimbabwe um, where pregnant women were lying on the floor. Apparently, there were no hospital beds as well. And then they also, there's also another video which actually went viral where um, in a hospital in South Africa where pregnant women were also lying on the floor. And um, I think it's the MMMC of Johannesburg, if I'm not mistake mistaken. He went there and he's the one that took the video to show that. And he mentioned that um, actually the clinical manager there or the sister at that hospital says that they have an influx, like a very, like, a, an increase of um, foreign nationals um, who are undocumented. The reason why they say that, obviously, hospitals keep records. Guys, um, I'm actually in the health sector, so I know that. So hospitals keep um, a record of who, who's coming in. And obviously, you know, when you come into the hospital, they request for your um, identity. So that's how they keep the stats. So from that, that's when the sister said that um, most of the women who come to deliver there, to get their babies delivered there, um, are actually undocumented because they have no um, form of identity to like identify themselves. And um, actually, this is very true. So let me just give um, a background story. So um, there's this other time I was in um, in a hospital in Cape Town, Robertson to be precise. And whenever the, like there were women who, who would come into the hospital and they would come in um, due um, for, for delivery and you'd find out that they, like they have no source of documentation. But then another thing about our law or our health act is that um, I, for example, as a doctor, or a healthcare worker, I can't just say that, um, okay, or or it is, I can't just say that, okay, um, 
you don't have documentation and then just look at you and be like, oh, sort yourself out, go and get um, IDs or whatever documentation, I won't help you out. So we do have people, like a lot of people who come in and um, they don't have like the necessary documents and we can't just leave them like that. We have to help them out. So, so basically healthcare professionals do face these things and whatever stats that they give are genuine because they keep record of this. So I'm not necessarily putting blame on anyone because you know, you sign the Hippocratic oath that you're going to help everyone, you're going to um, do no harm, you know? So I believe it's I believe it's true because there are records that, okay, we have this person from here who came in. And what I've noticed is that a lot of undocumented migrants, because they don't have the necessary documentation, they are even unable to come in for like antenatal care, you know, where we can be able to check if the baby is doing well. And a lot of them would, would face complications because of this. And this is so sad. It's honestly so sad. I honestly don't like it when you're there and then you see a child, um, like a pregnant, like a baby probably um, might experience like some sort of complications just because their mother is not booked and they don't know what problems they might have. So this is another problem again. So I do believe that um, we do have foreigners, like outside, by foreigners I'm talking about undocumented, who put a strain into this because if they are undocumented, meaning that they can't even provide a budget for these things. So meaning that they can't even provide for those people you know, let me give you an example. If let's say you um, have a party, you think um, you have five people coming to your party and then you prepare for five people. And then suddenly you see 20 people coming in. How are you going to allocate the resources for those people that are unplanned for? Basically, that's what we are saying. I believe that's what they are saying, you know. So, yeah. Um, Okay, so, and then we have, okay, so trust says it's not free, Senzini. Yes, that's true. For those who pay taxes, it's not free, but um, health, like healthcare in South Africa is free, trust. Healthcare in South Africa is free unless you are going private and unless you have medical aid. For example, if you have a medical aid um, and you go to a public institution, you can pay for it because you have a medical aid. That's what our law says. Um, I believe, yes, you can pay if you have a medical aid. So health is free for everyone unless you go to private or unless if you have a medical aid, I extend to be corrected. Um, and then we have Senzen. Okay, stop being silly. Pay for your medical bills in Zimbabwe and not in South Africa. Okay, and then we have Senzen again. If terrorism enters our country, then they'll be made to leave forcefully. Every one of them rounded up. The governments need to make arrangements for them to leave. We don't need to negotiate. Okay, and then Senzen again. Long live to Dula. Okay, we have life in wisdom. We will always have this problem as long as ANC is in power. I agree. <laughs> as Nguni, Basotu, Koi people, we must think practically and ethically. Most definitely. Most definitely, I agree. So after they find they are undocumented, do they get aborted after delivery? Also, is the baby eligible for citizenship? So, um, no. Um, you don't just get citizenship just because you are born in South Africa. So like I always say, I stand to be corrected. But yeah, you don't get citizenship just because you're born in South Africa. And another thing, no, the babies are not um, aborted at all. No. So just do a normal delivery. They are treated the same way like South Africans will be treated, basically. Um, nothing will even be mentioned about their nationality. So um, yeah, nothing about that. The treatment is actually the same. Um, for example, let's say if um, the mothers, let's say they don't even have nappies for their babies, they get free nappies. It's so cute. I, I really love it. I, I love it so much. So no, they're treated the same way. Um, if anyone ever says that they've been treated differently, I don't know. Obviously, I can't say I've been to all the hospitals in South Africa, so definitely not. I'm only um, around 
where I am. So basically, no, um, they are treated the same way. There's no abortion. I think that that would be very evil. Why would you abort someone's baby if they want it? So no, we just like they are just helped to be delivered and yeah. And then, okay, we have Senzeni. Live wisdom, we've been so nice, and now people are taking us for fools and notice um, when the same scum went to Libya, they made them slaves there, and no complaints of the Libyans from those same failed states. Um, so basically, with the Libya situation, this is actually very true. In um, Libya, we like there's there are a lot of atrocities happen there people are put in very cramped spaces libya situation is another discussion and i think that um it's also one thing that we can actually discuss about and it would be nice to like just um put people out there to actually also voice out and give us their opinion by just talking out and sharing their opinions and not just by um, commenting. So Libya is a very huge topic and people actually just going there just to cross the Mediterranean Sea, um, just to go to um, France and guys, people go through harsh situations just to find themselves in Europe. See the situation of people coming into South Africa, I don't think it's that much better because I mean, you just cross a fence. I always make a joke about this that, you know, um, People around um, Swaziland, for example, in Zimbabwe, basically, you see the fence, man. This, it's a mediocre fence, basically. It's not even a border. So I'm like, well, this even looks like just the fence that even I can just cross. Well, if there are no soldiers, obviously, I'm not saying I'll do that because it's illegal. I'm just saying it's it's nonsensical. It's It doesn't even qualify to be called a border. I don't think it even qualifies to be called a border. Basically, that's just what I mean. Um, okay. Then uh, we have Boris. Oh, hey, Boris. Okay. <laughs> You're also dividing Africa. Be careful of all this rubbish you always said. How? Boris, rubbish. Okay. All right. Let me move on. So, <laughs> and then we have um, human chapter. Okay. We are not a rich country. We can't help everybody as a third world country. This is actually very true. We can't um, help everybody, but the, we can help those that we can be able to help. And then um, we have life wisdom again. Even illegal kids get citizenship in South Africa. Okay. I meant deported, not aborted. Sorry. Oh, okay. Okay. No, they don't get deported. No. So basically... Um, medical professionals don't report someone being illegal. I've never heard of that. I don't think it's done. But yeah, I, I can review the National Health Act and yeah, I'll, I'll get on it. But I don't think they get deported. We can't just say, oh, yay, I spotted an, an illegal Zimbabwe. Let me call the, the uh, Minister of Health. No, 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 no. Yeah, but like I said, I can always review um um, the health act so okay and then human rights commission um, united nations and the rest of the world says nothing about the treatment of refugees in north africa but they always got something to say about south africa very true you know one thing um i always say is that you see this topic about xenophobia in south africa it sells. It's newsworthy. The reason why I say um, this is because whenever, um, even this, the reason why the South African media, the reason why I think the South African media pushes the um, xenophobia thing, ne, is because whenever they do that, they get the world's attention. That's what they are doing. That's why they are doing it. And I feel like that's not how to go about this. You know, we can work around this in a proper manner. I expect them as a media to be not biased, for them not to be biased. They must report what is there, not what they think. They can't talk like me. They studied journalism. They can't talk like ordinary me and start saying, like, yeah, this is what, no. I believe that them 
if media who studied this should be like should not be biased and should give facts and when they do that they should report both sides of the stories like okay this is the south african side this is what they are saying because as media they are not judges they they should not judge you know so i feel like south african media is losing the point guys i feel like they are they acting like judges and i feel like they shouldn't be doing that they should be reporting and not giving like being judges and coming up with conclusions like okay south africans are xenophobic no i think they should be reporting what they you know report um the other side and the other person's side you know not act like judges like okay this happened yeah they're xenophobic no i feel like they're so unprofessional honestly um okay so there's one more thing that's overlooked we south africans um namibians and botswana all of us have gone through an industrialization process so our standards are not the same as some of those countries that's true i admit um so we have reina you boris don't come here with your stupid comments <laughs> Okay, sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, live in wisdom. Okay, Lesotho and Eswatini must just be annexed and made a province of our government. Um, our government is stupid. I agree. I agree. I think Eswatini and Lesotho guys, we can just summer do that. You know, like me and you type of thing. You know. <laughs> so okay. Um. Okay, so we have, um, okay, you must report on them. Um, that is nonsense. So somehow, you know, you know, when it comes to um, the South African constitution or some laws, we can like some disagree with certain things. Um, I also have a different opinion about like the health act, like sometimes I don't understand why we can't do certain things. So basically, it's the same. Let me give you an example. It's the same thing as, um, let's say, a criminal um, shot someone and they also got shot at. If they come to the hospital, will you not treat them because um, they are a criminal? That's the thing. They all get treated. Of which another person would say, well, I'll just leave the criminal to sort themselves out because they caused this on themselves. But unfortunately, that's not how the health system works. You treat everyone. So we are not there to be judges. You know, um, health um, care workers are there to give, um, to take care of the people and to provide um, health to the people. So basically, that's it. Um, then we have okay um the human chapter before there were borders we had to respect each other's territory that's also very true um even before we had colonial borders like africans divided themselves um within their tribes like okay the, from that river you know from that tree you can't cross type of thing and the borders thing has always been there it was just um like the colonial colonialists who came in and made physical borders we always had borders like, okay, you know, um, after you cross that river, you're in Basutu land, for example. If you cross that mountain, you know, you're in this place. So basically, that's just um, another example of it. So yes, um, in Africa, we always had borders. Even though our borders were just not physical borders, we just had like um, certain things that would use, like maybe a river, a mountain, for example. So um Senzen, Lesotho and Swaziland should be made in our um, should be made our provinces because they are our own people. That's very true. We share even more um, similar cultures with them than um, um, other people. Like even in Botswana, man. Like yeah. So um, so okay. Live in wisdom. Okay, at Senzen, yes, it's a cultural difference. Botswana and South Africa and Namibia is different to the rest of these countries. That's why they are having problems. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we have live in session. True, they must just give the facts, not their opinions. In America, um, the news is worse, though. That's all they do is give their opinion. You know, whenever the news does that, when they're being biased, right, that's when things get worse. You know, just imagine if um, someone could 
say something else like maybe for example we have this live session now and then someone posts like oh no um South Africa is like um go and attack foreigners no I didn't even say that they would just analyze whatever that they think it is and then come with their own conclusion of which like we say journalists should give facts that are there because that's their job that's what they studied say whatever that is there don't come up with a conclusion of some sort that's not your job give facts and leave it like that that's what you're paid to do to give us the news don't come up with solutions and what no that's not your job you just gather the information and tell us what's there that's it um okay so we have live in wisdom again. No, they must all get treated. Yes, yes, they must all get treated, of which that's what they do. They all get treated. So basically, it's just like that. Um, but they must get reported to the police. Yes, they do get reported. So with prisoners, ne? prisoners get reported. Um, however, illegal foreign nationals, um, like I said, I'll review the um, Health Act. But um, illegal foreigners, I don't think they get reported. I don't think you are supposed to report them. Just treat them and leave them. But with criminals, yes, they do get reported. And usually criminals are usually brought in by the police. But then if you there, you can report them. So, yeah. Um, so if a criminal comes in with a gun, with gun wounds, it gets reported to the police. Why is illegal immigrant not? You know, that's a good question that I don't really know an answer to you know some some um laws are just there like they're put in your face like they and you can't really deny or you can't oppose it in a way because it's the law and if you go and get against it then you get arrested or something or you get suspended or something so basically that's just that that's basically one of those things that i just like it's basically just one of those things that you're like if you can do this, why can't you do that? So basically, that's also um, part of the laws that are there that you can question them a lot. Like, okay, why are certain things happening the way that they are? So, yep. That's just that. Um and then do you guys have um, any other question or any points? <laughs> yeah, okay, Reina says good point, Wisdom. Yes, that was a very good point. That was a very good point, I do agree. Um, will I marry a foreign national? Okay, so... Um, since like okay, really, I I talk a lot basically. So basically, um, I would say this: um, Would I marry a foreign national? I wouldn't mind marrying a foreign national. Basically, I honestly wouldn't mind marrying um a foreign national. Um, I actually like have like a certain group of people that I like, of which I won't mention today. But yeah, I wouldn't mind marrying um a foreign national. But however. I am also not blind to the fact that we have people who do wrong things. And I'm sure, like we already mentioned, that we have people doing wrong things every way. As much as I wouldn't mind marrying a South African as well, because I'm already South African. So, yeah, <laughs> I don't know if you get what I said. But, yeah, I wouldn't mind marrying a foreign nation. I don't have a problem with um, any African at all. It's, um, But I definitely wouldn't go for someone that is a known criminal. A known criminal, like that individual is a known criminal. I definitely wouldn't do that. But yeah. Um, live with the, no, hi, you, you know, you people, you like get it, guessing things and whatnot. Um, I actually like um, Zimbabweans. Me, I like Zimbabweans because, well, they, they look like us, you know, they look like us. Well, yeah. And I like how they talk, you know. I really like how they talk. So I also like um, Botswana people. But I don't know if I would say they qualify to be foreign nationals. I also like them. And I also like um, Sutu and Swati people. And, yeah, basically, I'd say I like almost everyone. I, I, I like... Um, Tanzanians, 
I, I probably like how they dance. I like Zim, uh, Mozambicans. Obviously, everyone has some sort of uh, like what they like about certain people. So basically, that's just it. I, I just like Africans as they are. But then, yeah, I, I, I won't lie. I was just took aback by the situation that's happening amongst Africans. And that's why I feel like it's very important for us to actually discuss about these things and learn from each other. So we don't... um feel hate amongst each other and then we can things take things from there and another thing with the nigerians um it's not that i hate them at all i also wouldn't mind um marrying a nigerian like i've already mentioned as long as the person is a genuine person and they have no known criminal record i wouldn't mind um okay so live wisdom says i am a Shubi, but i only date colored women okay <laughs> no, okay. no, that's really nice because they're also African. So yeah, even if they weren't African, so <laughs> yeah, so that's actually very nice. And then okay, ha ha ha, they don't look like us. No, <laughs> I I don't know. Some of them look like us. So yeah, um, okay, no. In my family, we look um a little bit like koi sense oh so you guys are like the yellow bones of the country yeah <laughs> okay and then we have senzeni man um if our women marry foreign foreigners they must live in the countries not in south africa they always been bantulo you know i also agree with you senzen like i always say man you know women Follow your husband. I also believe in that. I mean, you know, how can you say you're married and you don't even like live with your like you don't even know where your husband's family is. You've never visited them. You've never been around them. No man, go to your husband. Go to your husband. You know. So yeah, that's what I believe in as well, Senzini. Um, I I don't get offended at all. Actually, um. I am in a relationship and I'm in a relationship with a Tsonga guy. I myself, I am Betty. I am a Betty person. Or Gina Mopulana. I don't know if you guys know that. But yeah, I am a Betty person and my boyfriend is Tsonga. So I'm already with a South African. I was just saying that I wouldn't mind if that was the case. But I'm already with a South African. So I am happy. I am happy. Happy. So yeah. So so I'm definitely not going to another country. I'll be with my guy here, you know, doing our South African things. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was just like a little play thingy. Um, and then we have live wisdom. Um, at Senzeni Mang, I agree. Most Gwere Gwere babies that have citizenship have Nguni mothers. <laughs> no comment. Even Elvis Nyati had a South African wife. Oh, I actually didn't know that about Elvis. I thought, um, hey, like his wife was probably South African. I think basically that's just what I meant by, like, we don't look that much different from each other. So, mm -hmm. mm. that won't last for too long. What what won't last for too long? Hi, Senzeni. What won't last for too long? Oh, that, that. It's possible. It's possible. Um, I'm not super sure. It will. Our poor sisters like Gwere Gweres and our rich ones like Whiteys. Guys, you see, with what you've just mentioned now, um with um the sisters and um the rich sisters and the poor ones um that's actually <laughs> yeah even women actually say what you're actually saying right now that rich white guys um like um not rich white guys i mean rich black guys like um what's this they like white women and then poor let me just leave it there. Rich white guys like white women. And obviously, the poor guys would always go for the black girl because they probably can't afford to be with a 
whiting. That's what they are saying. That's not what I'm saying. That's what they are saying. So, excuse me. So we have Malik Arujuna. Oh, sorry if I butchered your name, Malik. Yeah, I'm going to say Malik. So, hi, I'm from India. Hi, Malik. So, yeah, so um, if you missed um, the conversation, because, yeah, we're almost at the end. But um, we've been talking about um, the situation between um, South Africa and Zimbabwe. So I don't know if you know what has been happening um, between the two countries. But basically, that's what we have been talking about and the situation around it. So, yeah. And then, okay, so from my experience, white girls are not hard to maintain. The only problem is their families. This is actually true. The the older families are the ones that are a bit hard. So, um, Malik, my name is Philippine Malumani. So, yeah, welcome to the Africa, Malik. My name is Philippine. Yeah. So, Philly, sweet pine. Yeah, Philly. <laughs> yeah so guys um yeah we'll end it we'll be ending the live session at um like in 10 minutes 10 minutes time and um i still want us to like actually discuss on this so basically we'll also have the session tomorrow but um what we're going to do is that um i'll be putting people in like you guys most definitely to um actually um, give in your points of view, then we'll take it from there. So I feel like um, this type of discussions are very important um, for us not to insult each other and share our points so that we can come up with a solution that will work for all of us. Um, okay, so Live Wisdom says, in fact, white girls are very understanding. I dated an Africana. Her father was not happy at first, but liked me afterwards. That's cute. It means that you are doing this. Ne? Live Wisdom, you are doing this because who doesn't like that? Yeah, probably. I'm just saying. I don't know. <laughs> um, okay. Um, Philippine, nice name. Thank you, Malik. Okay, but he will say racist things like you are not like other black guys. Oh, yeah, that's very rude. Like, what do you mean other black guys? I would, I would ask, like, what do the other black guys do? That's what I would ask. And I also, I also don't like it when someone compliments me by saying you are not like other blacks. What do you mean? I'm, I am black. I can't be like other blacks. I am black. And I am black, black, black. So... Um, Senzeni, personally speaking, I've told my children that they have to marry Bantus. If not, they'd better not come back home to my place because I don't want to know. <laughs> Senzeni, <laughs> that's so funny. Um, actually, you know what you're saying? It's, it's, I don't think it's, um, what's this? It's only limited, um, to South African families. Uh, uh, for example, I have a Zimbabwean friend, he's male, and then he says to me that um, his father actually said to him, um, do not get married to um, a South African girl, um, get yourself a successful Zimbabwean woman to marry. And I, I've, I also have a Nigerian friend who actually said, she's female, who actually said to me that um, her parents says that she mustn't get married to um, an outsider, um, she must actually get married to another Nigerian. Um, I also have an Indian friend whom I once asked, would you date um, someone outside your culture? And she said, no, um, her family wouldn't allow that. So I think it's basically certain families, actually a lot of families who wouldn't want their people to marry outside their cultures because they somehow want to retain their cultures. So it's chilled since then we have like parents, a lot of parents who wouldn't want their children to marry outside because they'd want to um, retain their cultures. So I don't think it's offensive or, or anything. We have those parents like that. And like, for example, I've never re really told my parents that I wouldn't mind um, getting married to a foreigner because I've never had a conversation like that with them. And yeah. But yeah, I do have people around me. We do discuss about this. I have, you know, even in within the same group, we can have like South Africans saying like, no, 
I want a South African, right? And within the same group, like would have like South Africans, like Zimbabweans, Mozambicans, because we have a lot of Mozambicans and Zimbabweans in South Africa. So like I said, within a friend group, you can have all these people, like not to talk of Botswana people, Wasutu people, we are like integrated, like we just one, you know. Um, you would have like um, different opinions, like, no, uh, I also wouldn't date a, a South African, I would date a Zimbabwean. Like, oh no, I wouldn't date someone outside my culture, I would date um, a Malawian, no. So basically, um, it's a common thing amongst our culture um, that people do, don't want to date outside their cultures. So yeah, and then, um, Okay, so wisdom. No, I am middle class. Her family was well off. Okay, okay. But you know, we still have middle class people who would take out their whole salary because I, I want to show you that I can provide. So <laughs> I hope you didn't injure yourself that much, um, wisdom. I hope you didn't torture yourself. Um, so yeah. Um, and then Malik says, I like black girls. Oh, that's really nice. Um, I don't know if this will be offensive, but um, would your parents allow you to get married to a black girl? It's just a curious question. Um, we have, okay, life wisdom. It's in Zelma. For me, my kids can only marry Ngunu, Vasutu, Koi, or the Namibian tribes. If you bring a Kwere Kwere or white to my house, I will not be happy. You know, it's so funny what you're saying right now, uh, Wisdom. You say you wouldn't be happy if they could bring a whitey, but you say that another whitey actually brought you to their father's house. That's very ironic. Um, so we have said, okay, that's the spirit we are a noble race, yeah. Um, I mean, some of these cultures actually eat dogs and cats. We are supposed to accommodate these things. <laughs> Hey, you know, hey, hey, uh, when it comes to like, hey, food, yeah, hey, so, and then that's true. So, yeah, it's it's there, and then, <laughs> and then wisdom says, yes, I will sleep with anyone from any race, but marriage is different. Yeah, I guess so, cause um. Marriage is a lifetime um, commitment. So I guess that would probably be the case. Hmm. I find all races of women attractive, but having family and kids with them is diff is a different story. Yeah, that's true. Um, it's a bit more difficult for like um, other people to actually do that. So, yeah, I understand. So, yeah, guys, um, thank you so much for um, tuning in. And um, just look out for um, the invite. So, and then in tomorrow's live session, as I've already said, is that um, I'll be inviting people to actually, like, give in their opinions so they could actually um, talk and we can hear from them and not just me talking so it will be even more productive so thank you once again and please don't forget to like and comment and share the video once again also don't forget to um, subscribe to my youtube channel and let's have the channel grow and also use this opportunity to learn each with each other um, to learn from each other i mean and to you know grow from here so thank you so much for um coming i really appreciate it and yeah i love you guys team thank you so much bye um okay so yes okay bye guys